Hello Internet, I'm Guy. I'm back working on the Inclino clock, which is what uh, Dave and I, my collaborator, are calling this clock. And as you can see on the left here, this is the rendering that he has done, and this is what I will have finished at the end of this video. I'm just going to finish the front and the back, get all the details tidied up, so then I can finally start writing the code for this whole thing to get it to actually work. It's been a long ride, and I appreciate those of you who have subscribed and stayed with me on this. This video will not be quite as long as some of the previous ones, and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy watching how I make this thing. Dave and I weren't entirely happy with the way the shellac went on here, so we're going to try plan B. So flipping it around and remounting it onto the lathe. But before I do that, I'm going to put some packing tape to cover where it goes through and sees through here. Because uh, I think something's getting carried over onto this side here, and you can see a slight delineation there. So a little packing tape might help. We'll see. Put this right across this whole area here. So now I can bolt this on the other way around uh, with a quarter by 20 bolt and put that right onto the lathe and spin it up. So yes, you can definitely see some markings here and I'm going to start with the green Scotch-Brite and maybe work my way down to the gray stuff which is the fine finish. Here we go. I'm going to try and keep this really flat so it doesn't go into the uh, recesses and holes here. I feel like I'm making a vinyl record. All right, let's see how that looks. I can still see the marks here. I've got to sand all the way through those and some stuff right here too. That's residue from shellac, I believe. Okay, I've got a sheet of 320 sandpaper. That should cut right through that as long as it isn't too aggressive. It's looking good so far. Let's see how it looks when it's stopped. Yeah, I'm getting through it. There's still some stuff here. That's looking a lot better. All right, plan C is I'm going to use Howard's Feed and Wax. This is a wax uh, furniture polish that I use on my furniture when I make it and I think this is going to be the ideal finish. It's just the whole point is to try and keep fingerprints from forming on here. So a small amount should go a long way. Let's just see if this is going to work out. Yep, looks like it's applying. What's wonderful about this stuff is it's made from orange oil, so it smells fantastic when it goes on. It's a real reward for finishing, refinishing or fixing up your furniture that's not doing well. So you let that set for a few minutes. I think it says 20 minutes on here. And I'll come back and buff it in. Let's see how that's going to work out. So I'm planning to secure the brass to the faceplate with some double stick tape. This is um, going to give us the option of removing this eventually, I suppose. I, I'm hoping that should never be necessary, but this is the plan for today. That should be enough. Now I just need to peel off the backing without removing the tape. Okay, this is the moment of truth. I'm going to lower this on by putting a quarter inch drill bit through there and through there so it's centered. Oops. Never say oops when you're doing a final assembly. All right, so let's see. I want to be right about hopefully there. I think that's going to work. I'm going to double check everything. There's the ball. And it's going out of sight on that end. And it's going out of sight on that end. Okay, so now is it centered? It's not hitting anything? All right. 
So I'm going to very carefully just rub it down. I'm hoping that's it. Okay, and then I'm going to put a little nubbin in there. I have to glue this in right there. Drop a glue will hold that in just fine. Okay, so I want to cover that up as soon as possible. So I've got this ready, and you see I've identified top center, so I know that these holes will all line up. Oh, actually they're not lining up. Hmm. All right, I'll get that right, and then I'll put all those screws in. Missed it by that much. Okay, so now I can just put all the screws in and seal that thing up so I don't have to worry about finger marks on it. And as before, I'm going to tighten down and then just back off maybe a quarter turn so that the acrylic can slide relative to the wood as the wood expands and contracts in humidity. So there we are. Okay, so the front face is secure, so now I'm going to be working on the back. This is the black acrylic that will sit right down into here, and I'm going to drill holes through here for, to mount it down with brass screws. So the hole for the fan needs to be one and one eighth inch diameter. So I'm just going to use my little green template, which has come in so handy over the years. Set that up right there, and draw my circle right there. Same thing for this. I'm going to mark an X right about there to give it clearance. Oh, that's the wrong one. This one, that's the power jack. It goes right here. And this one, if you're going to reach around from the front with your right hand, you want the power, I mean the hour set button to be somewhere over here. So I'm going to just arbitrarily put it right there. So uh, next step is to get this on the clock and transfer punch the mounting holes over. Right here, get that lined up so that this is straight right at the six o'clock position. That is right at the 12 o'clock position. And I have my transfer punch set here. I'm going to look for a 1 8 inch punch, which is that one. And I will, mm, yes, I will knock those in there just to mark where those screws go. And that is perfect. Okay, got those punched in there. This is the screw and the clearance uh, drill for those screws, so. I forgot to video, but I used this step drill to start the hole, and then I've got this one marked with marker so I know how deep to go, and I've already gone through one side, and now I'm going to go through the other side and clean it up. Just clean up the hole a little bit. That's all it takes. So for the um, hour set button and also for the power jack, I'm just going to start by drilling a quarter inch hole with a plastic cutting drill. So this is a much different taper. It's a steeper taper. It won't pull up and jump when it goes through the plastic into the wood. So, goes through nice and easy. I should probably run the drill a little faster, but that was fine. So now I'm going to do this one. Easy peasy, the way it guides through the acrylic, that these plastic drills are worth every penny. I'm going to use my old school analog gauge here and measure that to uh, 7 sixteenths. Right there. So this is the bottom where the power connection will be. This is the fan that will remove hot air but I need to bring in cool air along here. So I'm going to set up a compass here. I've got this taped down so it doesn't move. I'm going to set this on the same radius as this switch. And I'm going to mark for a couple more vent holes along here, maybe a couple more half inch holes about that same radius, same diameter, so that it'll just match. 
So to mount the fan, I'm going to center it on the hole here and then use a transfer punch to mark just one of the holes because if you mark them all, it could be a little bit off. Okay, I've drilled that hole, which is eighth inch for some 440 bolts. So I'm going to line this up, drop that into that hole, and then I can mark all the other three holes here just perfectly, get it lined up. Keep that in place. Hit this spot, keep that in place again, one more spot, now I can drill all of those and they'll be perfectly aligned. So I've drilled four ventilation holes in a nice radius here that align with the power jack. I've got this set up and I've got that set up, so now it's time to take the paper off. It's like removing the bandages on a patient. This is a beautiful material, it's got that matte finish. And then the other side, I'm pretty sure, is shiny, regular finish. So the first thing that I do after peeling off the paper, there's a lot of static buildup. So I use Brilliant Eyes, this stuff right here, squirt a bunch on, and that creates a beautiful silicone-like finish that is anti-static and protective and really uh, Boy, it feels great. It feels all nice and slippery and shiny. I've got all the parts mounted, so the fan is in here, drawing the air out here and going in through these four holes. This is the power jack and the set button. It we'll only be setting the hour, so um, it's just simpler. On the back here, I'm going to bring all these wires together to a point in the center here, and then it'll come out with an umbilical cable with a plug will then connect into all of the other circuitry in the clock here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on my electronics bench, get that all ready, and the next step is programming. Woohoo! Alrighty, off camera I have wired up the back plate here, which will go on like that, and I've got a connector here so it can be removed and service, gives, gives room to service the interior electronics here, and I've got one connector that connects them all together. So this will flip over and tuck in like that, and that will drop in like that, be secured with four brass screws, and I can plug in the power, and it, since it's running now, this little tiny fan is actually sucking air in through these holes and out the top to encourage the convection to keep the motor cool inside. So the next video, once I've written the code, will show this thing working. So for those of you who have been patiently subscribing to this project, Give me another week. It's going to take some time to write all the code that goes in here to make this thing work. But I'm finished with all of the construction. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. So if you have, please give me a like or subscribe if you would like. You can give me a super thanks or you can see a link down below to support me on Patreon. So I appreciate any support you want to give me to keep the channel going. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in another week.